YouTubers, welcome to my channel. My name's Desiree and my channel is Livin' La Vida Loca. Welcome to my crazy life. Today we're going to talk about Irish wolfhounds, my babies, the center of my life, and how I bathe them. So first I want to talk about the products that I use. The shampoos I use are Young Living. They're from Young Living. That's an animal sense shampoo. It has essential oils, therapeutic grade essential oils. There's no mineral oils in here, no synthetic perfumes, no artificial colorings. It is a semi minty scent. It reminds you ever so slightly of peppermint, but maybe a little bit more mild than that. And it's really good about cutting through odors and they don't really smell like the shampoo after I use the shampoo, but it does good at cutting through any like grease or buildup in their coat breaking down the dirt and minerals. So I highly recommend this. And all these products I will link down below so that you can see pricing information, shipping, etc., and an entire thorough ingredient list. The other shampoo that I sometimes use, um, if you wanna go with something even more natural or with no scent whatsoever, Dr. Bronner's. Dr. Bronner's has a ton of fantastic products. The Pure Castile Soap, you can use this in everything. <laughs> um, I use it to bathe the dog sometimes. This is just the uh, hemp 18 in 1 hemp baby unscented pure castile soap, but they come in all different scents, lavender, tangerine, uh, but this one is an unscented one if you want absolutely no added smell of any kind whatsoever. This is a really good choice. Um, I've had this bottle probably for over a year. It lasts forever and I haven't used this just on the dogs. Um, like I said, you can also use this in your laundry. You can make a mild soap with it. You can use it as shampoo. You can use it as body wash, face wash on yourself. Uh, all these products also um, or at least these two so far, the Young Living and also Dr. Bronner's are vegan and cruelty free. So they are not tested on animals. So I choose products intentionally uh, also for that reason. I inherited this uh, when I adopted my third Irish Wolfhound. I um, inherited this product. So this is not one that I purchased. However, I'm using it up since it was given to me. Uh, it is Nudie. The brand is Nudie. It is a condition and moisturizing spritz. It's called a daily spritz, but I don't put this on them daily. Uh, what I do is if I shampoo the dogs with um, just a shampoo and I don't put a conditioner on them when I give them their actual bath, I will then spritz them with this spritz after the fact. So it's kind of, it serves as a leave-in conditioner. And so it has a soft lily passion fragrance. It smells very, very good. Um, two of my three, don't like the sound of a spray bottle. So they don't like this product for the reason of the spray bottle. Now, if I cover their ears and spray them, they don't mind, it doesn't phase them. So go figure. The other spray that I have that is intended to be a daily spray that also conditions is one that I picked up when I was actually living in Alabama and there for training for a little bit. Um, and it's Bark and Bones Natural Coat Freshener for Dogs. The phone number is on the bottle and I will link this below to make sure that you get all the information. The only ingredients in here are fresh rosemary, mint green tea, glycerin, tea tree, lavender, and lemongrass essential diffused oil. So essentially it is just a base with added essential oils. And she had different scents or fragrances and I can't remember what all she had. This one sort of reminds me it, the, the strongest scent in here is tea tree, but it's not overly pungent. Uh, but like I say, some of these oils, because there was also the essential oils in the Young Living, of course, um, sometimes when there is a strong or pungent oil, or even there's kind of a misconception about this, if there's a strong pungent oil, or even like washing things with vinegar, etc., those are actually odor neutralizers. It's not as though if you use those products or those scents or those particular oils that you or your dog is going to smell like that essential oil. It's very strong, it's very pungent. They work more as odor neutralizers. So if you're hesitant to try something that is very strong, like tea tree is a very strong pungent oil, um, don't, don't be afraid to try it because it's probably gonna surprise you in what the after effect actually is. Uh, the next thing that I use in bathing for their ears, to clean their ears. This is another Young Living product. This is actually a massage oil or body oil. Uh, and forgive me, it has um, 
some drywall on it. This did not get covered when I was redoing uh, the master bedroom a while back. But what I do with this is I put a little bit on a cotton ball or a face swab and this is what I clean their ears with. And in the videos you'll see whenever I clean their ear, I don't go into the inner ear, just like on a human, you don't wanna go into the inner ear. Uh, this is simply for the outside ear. I flop it over, I get any excess wax and then in the part where it becomes kind of patterned or bumpy, then I just go over the outside, but I don't try to stuff it in any of the crevices or anything like that because wax in humans and animals, of course, serves as a barrier to keep things out of the ear canal that shouldn't be in there. So you don't want to eliminate all of that, but sometimes there's a little bit more excess wax that gets going toward the outer ear area. And because they are large dogs, they have large ears. I want to get some of that excess off and do it gently. Um, there's a great recipe for um, a DIY just mix at home type solution for ear cleaning for dogs that it's a mixture of like witch hazel some of those recipes though have alcohol in them which can be drying and I don't know how that feels to the pups if that's actually kind of an irritant um, I know if you put alcohol on your own body it's fine albeit a little drying um, but if you do have any type of small minute cut or anything you can definitely feel it so I don't want to make them uncomfortable at all so I've stopped making the DIY solution that included alcohol in it um, but I do have a subscription to Grove which I'll talk about in a later video and I did notice that they had an ear cleaning product on there that did not contain alcohol for the purpose of it not being drying. So I'll be curious to try that. But until this runs out, which will probably be a while, I'm going to stick with this because it's just a product that I have an excess of and I want to use it. And it works good. This one is the relaxation massage oil. So it has predominant smell of lavender in it. So it's nice. It's, it's mild. But again, you're only using a little bit of this to clean the ears on a cotton swab or cotton ball. So... It's not really like you smell this except right when you're putting it on the swab and cleaning the ear itself. So I usually do that first when I bathe the dogs. I try to remember to clean their ears first. Otherwise, if you have a cotton ball in your pocket or anywhere near, it's probably going to get soaking wet and then you've wasted a cotton ball for no reason. So don't want to do that. The other two, the shampoo and conditioner that I had started with before I had gone on to these other products and bought them later on were um, their Bobby Panter brand. Uh, this is the shampoo. I picked these up at TJ Maxx um, when I got my first puppy, uh, which was two years ago now. Um, and this is also a cruelty-free product. Um, so I picked this up. Um, it shows the original sticker on here. This bottle's been through a lot, but it shows it. Original price at $10. I picked it up for $5.99 at TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Marshalls. Um, and I got the dog shampoo that's the refreshing it's eucalyptus oatmeal mint chamomile rosemary and aloe vera gel so you don't want to dry their fur out too much but then again you don't want to leave a lot of residue and grease on there so that's why i like a lot of these like i say this either tea tree or in this case eucalyptus there's usually a strong type of cleansing essential oil ingredient in all of these that helps break through your odors break down dirt break down grime whatever else is built up on their coat without leaving it too drying. So there's usually some type of other slight, very small oil base in all of these that helps with that. If I do a shampoo on the dogs and I don't plan on following up with like the conditioning spritz that I'm trying to use up, there's probably about this much left in here. Cause this product, I don't know if this product is cruelty free. This is the only one that I'm not sure. And I haven't looked it up. I do not see where it mentions cruelty free on here. So I'm going to assume that it's not. Um, I'll modify this in the comments if I'm wrong on this, but again, I did not buy this product. It was given to me, so I'm just using it up because I don't want to be wasteful. Uh, but all the products that I've intentionally purchased myself and spent my own money on are vegan and cruelty free. So including these. So told you about this shampoo. If I shampoo with this one, I do the matching conditioner. And so I'll actually condition the dogs with this. In this video, I don't condition the dogs with this because I spritz them later. But this conditioner is the same brand, Bobby Panter. It's the nourishing dog conditioner. It has safflower oil, keratin shea butter, and aloe vera gel, again. And it has a nice scent. It's, again, very mild. It almost reminds you of kind of like the Jergens Cherry Almond uh, Lotion ever so slightly ever so slightly so very mild and the scent in this one this one actually smelling it kind of just stinks just smelling it like this but 
when it when I put it on the dogs it seems like it smells nice so those are the products that I use as far as tools that I use I use my hands mostly when bathing the dogs and of course if I bathe them outside I use the hose this is depending a lot on weather and then also preference because not all of my dogs enjoy being bathed the same way so this mitt is actually it's a body mitt from eco tools so this came with I think a body scrub that was given to me as a gift and then when I figured the mitt was probably full of microbes and ready to kind of be tossed out, I thought, well, it's great because it slides on your hand and this would be great for bathing the dogs. And it's machine washable. So what I do now is I use this and my other free hand when I give the dogs a bath, whether it's in the shower or outside, and this just helps me scrub and kind of rub down. Um, and then I can use my hand with my free fingers to kind of work stuff in or peel stuff away if I need to. So I'll either put the shampoo or conditioner directly on the mitt and suds it up, or I'll put it directly on the pup and then suds it up. I kind of just, there's really no right or wrong way or rhyme or reason, I don't think. And then I just throw this in the washing machine when I'm done with it. Um, you can dry this in the dryer, but I think it's going to wear out faster because it does have elastic down here to fit it around your wrist. So I don't want to wear it out too fast. So I'm afraid the heat from the dryer is eventually going to blast that elastic. So I usually just let it air dry. Granted, sometimes I forget and I do throw it in the dryer and it hasn't killed it, but <laughs> prefer to air dry to make it last longer. And then last but not least, towels. For sure, always have some good towels on hand. Um, big dogs, so I have very big, thick towels that I use on them. These are full size, probably more equivalent to what they refer to as bath sheets these days. And so always have these ready. I found that it's better to have everything laid out and accessible and close to you, albeit not too close. Sometimes if you're bathing and you have your towel on the floor or you have your towel too close on the ground, then you end up getting your towel sopping wet and by the time you need it to dry your dog, it's useless because it's as wet as you and the dog are and everything else. So keep these close to you and accessible, but up and away from the water so they don't get wet. But while you're bathing, if you have everything close to you, it makes it much easier because when you're ready to grab something, then it's right there and it's accessible. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, like I said, this is my crazy life. So I'm starting with my dogs for my first vlog because they're sort of the center of my life. They are my kids. <laughs> they are my babies. Um, I love them with all my heart and I'm a stay at home dog mom essentially for the most part, uh, but we'll get into a lot of that later. But if you like this content, please like, share, subscribe because there will be more to come. Uh, the content's going to be very varied, so it's my life. So whatever you want to see more of, I can give you more of. If there's less or you have questions, please reach out, let me know, and like I say, give it a like and a thumbs up. Enjoy. Typically I begin by cleaning the pup's ears using a mixture of witch hazel, alcohol, and a little bit of an essential oil. In this case, I have a Young Living Massage Oil that I'm actually using up. It's an oil base, it has light fragrance to it, and with no alcohol in it, it doesn't burn the dog's ears. So I put a little bit on a cotton swab and swab out the ear. If I'm washing the pups outside, Skye and Herford both enjoy being bathed outside versus inside. So I bathe them outside and I just put a leash on them to keep them close to the porch, standing on the concrete, their feet don't get muddy when I'm giving them a bath. And I will spray and wet them down completely until they're nice and wet. And at the end of their bath, they come back in the house to stay out of the mud and I attempt, at least, to dry them. Herford loves to be dried and he loves the towel and he will just attack me wanting to be dried off with the towel and ruffled up in the towel, whereas Skye will run around the house completely like Tasmanian devil. Uh, she likes to run up on the couch and burrow into the couch and burrow into the cushions and it's a game to her to just run away from me. I don't think she minds being dried so much. It's just she'd rather shake and run around and jump on the dog beds all over the furniture and then you just have wet dog all over the furniture and she'll dig and burrow and just really goes berserk. Ailish will do this too. Herford will get excited mainly to be dried. Uh, Ailish prefers to be bathed inside the house. She doesn't like the sprayer on the hose, so she will actually, if I guide her into the bathroom, she's not a fan of it, but if I take her by her collar and guide her in nice and gently and ask her to step in, she will step into the bathtub on her own. 
given that she probably weighs somewhere around maybe 160 pounds, this is very helpful. So when it's all said and done, I take my supplies and simply drop them into the washing machine and put them on a cycle just like I regularly would with the towels, the collar that I use for bathing, and my Eco Tools mitt that I use for bathing. We go on a daily walk anyway, but daily walks are especially fun after the pups have had their baths and they are brushed and clean and smell so good and just look absolutely beautiful. And today was no exception because there was a great sunset and just their hair blowing in the breeze. They absolutely loved it and looked fantastic. So again, if you like this video, please like, give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.